thanks very much. Um, I'm delighted to have the opportunity to be here today and as leader of the Irish Creamy Mill Suppliers Association. Um, I think it's necessary that we engage. Uh, we engage with people who have an, an orientation for, for the environment uh, and for commercial farmers. I think it's very, very necessary that we engage. Far too often there's a vacuum and it builds a wedge. And um, just, you know, I don't have slides um, and I'm not the most punctual. I did arrive just about on time. Um, <laughs> But, but I am a commercial farmer with a serious interest in engagement because that's absolutely necessary as we move forward. You know, I'm married to Joanne. I give a long time in Mockery and enjoyed my time there. And it probably, the one negative out of Mockery is it gave you a bad timekeeping. Um, <laughs> it taught you to be, to be late for a lot of things. Um, but, you know, they're married to Joanne. We have two kids, four and a half year old and a two year old. And I'm sure there's people in the room that, that are in the sa at the same sta stage in life. And, you know, Nora May just started school. She's going to be there for 13, 14 years, three, four years in college. Where is she going to be then? What's, what's the world going to be like? And we need to, ta we need to take action. We need to stop different trends that are out there. And we saw the water quality trends yesterday. So this is an opportunity for in in engagement, I believe. Um, I don't have slides, as I said. I, I believe in trying to hit and miss. We have policy officers who put together um, various different things there for me. But what am I doing? I suppose I am an intensive farmer, I own a zero grazer, and a lot of people in the room will gasp this morning at the thoughts of that. But commercial farmers can, can interact with the environment and protect the environment in that regard. I went for a load of grass this morning at 10 past seven, I have good lights on my tractor, went down the nice narrow road we live and I saw a pheasant rise and go off into the, the, the bushes uh, because I, I, it's important, you know, when we, when we do hedgerow management, that we leave opportunity for wildlife. It was just getting bright when I was filling my load and there was a hawk praying uh, right up there. And, and it was great to see on, on an ironic morning when I am coming up to speak with you. But it was also, you know, wonderful to have the opportunity to listen to the Damien O'Reilly show this morning where he started out and he really covered the entire, the, the entire agriculture and environmental issues. He started out below in um, Kerry Park, Wildlife Park with the stags and the mating season. He moved on then from one extreme, what, what you could call one extreme to another. Jim Bergen, the CEO of Tierlon, the largest milk processing co-op in the country. And he spoke, and I was glad to hear him say it on radio and go on record, that he needs to engage and his door is always open because my door certainly to engagement is always open as well. And that's where we can come together to have a future for the Nora Mays of, of, of this world. I suppose, what am I doing as a farmer? Um, I, I mentioned that I'm, I'm leaving the hedgerows uh, to, to flourish. I'm not 68 years of age, so I'm not as concerned about uh, electricity and that, but I would maintain them on a, a triannual basis if I could, the, the sides of them, uh, just to keep, to keep fence proof, uh, but certainly not on an annual basis. Clover incorporation is a huge, is a huge um, thing that has taken place on my farm this year where I've, I've incorporated clover in about 15 to 20% of the area farmed because, you know, I suppose when I started out in farm politics eight or 10 years ago, 10, 10 or 12 years ago as it is now in the ICMSA, I, I was there for an era where, we, where, where it was all about expansion. It was all about moving forward, delivering for the economy. And we'd done that under government guidance, it's fair to say. It wasn't just driven by farmers, it was driven by government policy at the time. But this week, as the dairy farm leader, I gave yesterday at Dairy Vision uh, 2030, where we aim to, to, to stall and reduce our emissions uh, from agriculture, which is absolutely critical for the future of the next generation. I gave the day before in Dublin Castle, uh, where, where we outlined the road, to a degree, the roadmap for, for agriculture. Uh, as an industry, I suppose we're unique in that we do have a roadmap to take that on. Um, Paul covered a lot of issues there um, that I was going to cover on the, on the environmental side, but you know, it is positive that we have 33% of our of our farmers in an environmental programme. We would like to see 70, 80, 90,000. Why exclude any farmer from an environmental programme? If everybody does something, um, we, 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 can, we can achieve a lot. I suppose if I was to condemn, and, and maybe I'm speaking more as a farm leader than as a, as a farmer here today, and I apologise for that. If I was to condemn some things, it's good to look back as we look forward. We have, we have as an industry learned from our mistakes. It's not that long ago when I'd go around to branch meetings this time of the year and farmers would say to me, I have a problem with my, my, my single farm payment. They're saying I have an overclaim, I have furs grown on the hill or I have rushes grown somewhere. And for him or her to draw down their payment, they would have to drag those out. Thankfully, as we move forward, you know, the policy makers are incorporating our biodiversity and, 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 all, the, and all the positivity that goes with it uh, into the future. And I think it can make for, for a better place. 
but um, I know the red light is after coming on there now. Um, you know, <clears throat> but certainly, I suppose, as an industry, and I represent an industry that's probably perceived as extremely harmful to the environment, we are incorporating technologies that will deliver. I think I heard a figure yesterday in 2018, there was 5% of slurry spread with low emission slurry spreaders, and in 2022, they estimate that to be uh, over 62% a 20% reduction in chemical fertilizer, the incorporation of clover and multi-species swords uh, in 2022 for Pat McCormack and for every other farmer that's out there can be built upon in the years ahead and have a huge benefit uh, for the years ahead. Uh, but I suppose my real reason for coming here today was to engage and engage fully. And I think as, a, as an industry, agriculture and particularly dairy needs to engage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pat.